Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello, Health Junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. And today's episode is one that I've been dying to do for a very, very long time. And it is all about medical marijuana. I grew up in an environment in Illinois, um, the, the last town on Lake Michigan before it hit Wisconsin. Pretty tiny little town there, Winter Harbor, Illinois. And guess what? In, in Winter Harbor, Illinois, it was kind of taboo to talk much about marijuana. Plenty of your friends smoked it in high school, of course. I mean, that's what happens. That's normal. But when you get to be an adult and you live in an environment where there's a lot of medical marijuana all around you, you start to think, well, you know, what is this stuff all about? But at the same time, you think to yourself, am I doing drugs if I do medical marijuana? Am I a drug addict? And so I started to think through those types of things because if you've heard me talk, you know that I live in, lived in Colorado for six years and then I moved to Washington. And of course, there's a huge joke in my family as to my husband and I being big potheads since we love to live in the states that legalize marijuana. But, but oddly enough, I actually had never tried medical marijuana until about three months ago. And oddly enough, I really didn't really experiment until the last few months when I was dealing with some pretty serious insomnia. And I'll get into that in a minute. But I wanted to go through this podcast because it's something that one of my, not one of my, many of my patients ask me, what's my opinion? How do I feel about this? And normally I kind of would scoot around the whole idea because I'll be honest, I think I fell into some of the, let's say, thought in terms of, or stigma in terms of, oh my gosh, if I recommend medical marijuana to my patients, am I, am I telling them to do drugs, you know, a lot of that stigma around this. Now, of course, I knew some of the research, but I didn't really know the details about medical marijuana and how it affects the body and all of the receptors and things of that nature. And I have a feeling that a lot of people don't, because unfortunately, I'm I'm coming from an environment of people saying, dude, it's natural, you got to try it, medical marijuana is awesome. But, and yes, that's my voice of being that stigma, you know, we, we think anybody who uses medical marijuana, you know, it, to a sense, you know, that, that talks about it sounds a little bit like your, your typical stoner at the dispensary. And that's me being completely, completely biased, which it's not that way. In, in a lot of places here in Washington, it's not that way. And in fact, I've been in a quite few of them that everyone behind the counter, I mean, you, you might as well think you're buying shoes at Nordstrom. I mean, they're very knowledgeable. It's it's an incredible experience. However, I think a lot of people do think that um, going to these places is much like, you know, the movie Half Baked or something of that nature, and it's not. So that's one thing I wanted to to kind of talk about today too. In addition to some of these companies who are creating the medical marijuana products, because a lot of these folks who are doing it are scientists who know their stuff and are quite amazing folks. And I'm gonna talk about a company a little bit later who was kind enough to invite me into their lab, show me their whole operation, and wow, pretty impressive what's going on there. So first thing first here, going back to my statement about marijuana is natural, it can't hurt you. Anything that is an herb can hurt you. I'm talking about too much chamomile, I'm talking about too much let's go with echinacea, all of these different herbs do have harmful properties if you do too much of them and you use them improperly. And so I I really, really want to stress to everyone out there that herbs can hurt you, so can big pharma. It's all the same. It's really just knowing the dosage and how your body responds. And that's really the basis of, of my prescriptions to patients when I'm working with CBD and THC. So 
I'm going to kind of go from a basic level today in this podcast because a lot of people don't even know what, what does CBD mean, what does THC mean, and, and what do these things do. So let's get into the details here about the cannabinoids and, and what the heck's going on here. Now, what's pretty cool is that really we didn't know anything about the cannabinoids. So these are the molecules um, that we have, and we actually produce them ourselves. They're called endocannabinoids in, in one sense, and the plant ones are called phytocannabinoids. So the marijuana plant produces the phytocannabinoids, and that is your CBD and your THC. Whereas the us as humans, we produce endocannabinoids, and these are produced by the body on demand, oftentimes in response to an injury, in response to stress, in response to any type of need on the body that is more of a fight or flight response. We've even found that animals have endocannabinoids, not just humans, and it's a primitive response. There is a doctor from Israel who is pretty much the father of the research on the cannabinoids. And he started his research way back in the 60s. And he was known, he was the one who was known for identifying THC. And he went from that to CBD in the mid 90s. And, and it's amazing a lot of the different things he discovered, but in particular, two main receptors for the endocannabinoids, CBD, I'm sorry, CB1 and CB2. So there's two main receptors and it's kind of like a key. You're, you're going to put the key in the lock and turn it um, for these receptors. And so our endocannabinoids are one molecule that you would think of as the key. And then the lock being the cannabinoid receptors, the CBD1, or I keep saying CBD, CB1 and CB2. So it's, it's a lock and key system. It's quite cool in terms of how our body produces these endocannabinoids and, and then responds fast, pretty quickly to them. And, and these endocannabinoids are similar to our body's own endorphins. And in particular, a lot of folks that use these particular medical marijuana products, they're looking for relaxation to help with sleep. They're looking for pain relief. In particular, this endocannabinoid system that we have, it works on our gastrointestinal system, our heart. It works on pain perception, of course, because I've already talked about the endorphins, but also maintaining bone mass. It protects our nervous system. So in a case of inflammation, it is going to help protect our neurons versus have them degraded. We can regulate hormones, can control metabolism. We've got some immune function in terms of regulation of how much inflammation is produced by the body. And so our endocannabinoid system can help us to regulate an autoimmune type of reaction. And in particular, I do recommend these products for a lot of my patients with autoimmune conditions, especially joint conditions, as in the case of rheumatoid arthritis and things of that nature. Now, the other cool thing that this doc in Israel discovered is inhibition of tumor cells. And so there's a lot of research going on in that case now with the endocannabinoid system and fighting cancer. Now, this doc, I can't say his last name. I'm going to be honest. His name is Dr. Ralph. Um, and it looks like Michulam, maybe, if I'm butchering it, and Dr. Ralph somehow hears this, I'm totally sorry. I am not good at saying names. But nevertheless, this guy's done the majority of the research out there. And so let's go back to basics here. We produce endocannabinoids ourselves, and these endocannabinoids are going to bind to receptors, CB1 and CB2. So we've got this process happening. Now, what we've also found out is that we can make synthetic cannabinoids. So there are two that are produced by scientists in a laboratory. One's called Marinol and the other one's Sesamet. And these guys work too, but not as good. So that's an interesting component that we found that the phytocannabinoids, so the plant ones, work better than the synthetic ones. Now, this tends to be very common throughout the herbal medicine world as well. A lot of the herbal components work better than the synthetic. So something to keep in mind that, you know, when we look back at it, marijuana has a stigma for being a drug. 
you know, we know all about the cartels and with all of the El Chapo stuff and and all of that. We think about, you know, the drug, but really marijuana in and of itself is an herbal plant if we take away all the stigma. And we we look at plants as being medicine as a naturopathic doctor. And I don't know why I kept thinking I needed to exclude the marijuana plant. I guess the stigma, you know, and I'm just going to admit it fully out myself that I grew up in an environment where, where marijuana was drugs and that was bad. And I didn't want to be a bad person. I wanted to be a good little girl. And so nevertheless, I ignored it, but it truly is a plant and works much like a lot of the other plants that have been researched to help us with certain conditions. So Let's get into a little bit of the details. CB1 receptors, so the cannabinol receptors, are found mostly in the brain, the spinal cord, in the heart, the uterus, the testes, the liver, the small intestine, and a lot of our peripheral cells. So CB1 receptors are found to actually work better with THC. So THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol for anyone out there that doesn't know the the breakdown there. And in fact, if you want to get really geeky, it's delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So there you have it. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of folks out there that come into my practice are wanting pure CBD. They're like, I don't want to get high. I don't want any of the psychogenic effects. I just want the medical effect. Now, From what I just told you in terms of the CB1 receptors being more keyed in to to needing some of the THC there, this this is huge because I found this effect myself. The CBD oils that are pure don't really do much for me. And so it seems that we need a little bit of the tetrahydrocannabinol, the THC, to help activate our CB1 receptors. And especially if we know that those CB1 receptors are found in the brain and the spinal cord, if we want to get more of an effect for calming the nervous system down, yes, of course, we're going to have the tetrahydrocannabinol be more effective for things like anxiety, things such as pain, things such as pain in the intestines because of working with the small intestine. That's probably also why you get the munchies with some of the marijuana use is because we are going to have some relaxation effect on the CB1 receptors in in the intestines when tetrahydrocannabinol is involved. Now, of course, I just went through those things and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, I don't want the relaxation effect. I don't, I need to work. I don't want the anti-anxiety, chill me out, put me on the couch and eat Frito-Lays all night kind of effect. Well, no, most of us don't. I don't. And so that's where it comes into adjusting your dosages of THC. And there are companies out there that allow you to have higher amounts of CBD in your products and lower amounts of THC where you can adjust it. Because ultimately, the big thing here is, yeah, if I'm going to use medical marijuana, I don't want to be stoned. I need to function. And guess what? I need to find the right amount for me. So I kind of consider this responsible use of the medical marijuana products in terms of knowing your dosage, much like any other medication. And that's how I treat it. Much like if I was going to dose someone on thyroid medication, I work with the individual dosages of the THC as well. So that's how that works. Now, I just talked about the CB1 receptors. The CB2 receptors in particular, these guys are much more keyed to anti-inflammatory work. And by that, I mean shutting down autoimmune responses, shutting down craziness going on in your white blood cells, so your T cells, your B cells, your macrophages. So when I think of using the higher CBDs or some of the pure CBD oils, I'm thinking of patients who maybe they don't necessarily have pain or maybe they do, but we're wanting to really just shut down that auto immune inflammatory response. So one of my my perfect patients in this case that I would explain is maybe someone who doesn't have a lot of pain or no pain at all. They're going to respond better to the purer CBD oils with very minimal, minimal THC. Now, if we have someone with rheumatoid arthritis and they have quite a bit of pain, I'm going to recommend some THC in their formula because 
as I mentioned before, those CB1 receptors do need that THC activated. But if we're purely going for reducing an an inflammation process, like maybe Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where that neck is really swollen, there's not really pain, but the neck's really swollen, it feels weird. A lot of times I'm going to recommend the higher CBD oils that don't have very much of the THC, if at all, and see if we can get some anti-inflammatory respects or respects, effects. So the other big thing is, is antispasmodic. So spasms. If you have chronic muscle spasms, things of that nature, it appears that the, the CBD does tend to work well with that, but I'm also kind of noticing that you know, muscle spasms hurt. So the calming effects of the THC can be really beneficial. So what's my overall response here in in terms of what's going to be best for you? Well, there's some experiments. That's that's what you got to do. You've got to experiment with this stuff. And and it's great to have a naturopathic doctor or a doctor on board who's knowledgeable. Not why can I not talk today? Knowledgeable in this case to be able to to help you kind of move through the whole process here. So my big, big thought is for, for everyone is to find some doctors in their area that are knowledgeable about this and, and go see them. Because one of the things that I have found is that depending on your dispensary and who you get that particular day, there are better people in the dispensaries to explain things versus some others because it all just, just breaks down to, to the luck of the draw, I guess you could say. And, you know, trying out a couple different places for, for education. But remember that the folks at these dispensaries, they know their products really well, but they do not know your body. They do not know medicine. They're not doctors. And so the combination of going to a medical marijuana dispensary and learning is awesome. I encourage everybody to do that. And then combine with your doctor's thought processes on how to dose the medical marijuana. That's the best way to go about it. So now I've kind of gone into the details here. What I want to talk about in particular is what I see in practice and what's changed my mind about recommending medical marijuana. In particular, my practice, I've seen way too many of my patients on opioids and it ruining their lives. They, they're they constipated, they're angry, they're not enjoying life, they can't enjoy life, they're, they're either too, you know, numbed out or they're just living for their next pill. And at my old practice in Colorado, I worked in a low income clinic and it was, we joked on Friday, it was like pain pill Friday. Everyone lost their pain pills. They ended up in the toilet. They left it on the bus. Their neighbors stole it. Their kids stole it. I mean, you name the excuse and these folks are calling in a panic. Everybody they can on Fridays trying to get their pills for the weekend. That's so crazy. I just, it's, it's sad. And with medical marijuana, I've been able to get folks off the opioids and using the medical marijuana products so that they can enjoy life. And they dial the dosage in where they're not living for the next pill and they're not calling clinics and bugging them on Fridays about, you know, my, my medicine went down the toilet magically, you know, uh, my neighbor stole it. Oh, the stories. Anyway, That's one big thing. I would much rather have people using medical marijuana than the opioids. Now, the other big thing is is the the products, the brands. We are in an age now where we're getting amazing products out there because even a couple years ago when I was working with medical marijuana in Colorado, we didn't have it dialed in like we do now because you'd never know what was in each lot of, of, of say, a brownie or a oil. It, it was kind of hit or miss. And now that there's regulations where we have testing, and, and that's one thing for that's important for everyone to know is that in the state of Washington in particular, I don't know Colorado's laws as well anymore because I'm not there, but in the state of Washington, every single company that produces an edible that's sold in a dispensary is tested to know how much of CBD to THC is in there, which is awesome because now we can dial it in. Whereas if you're buying something from a friend or you're making it yourself, you have no freaking clue in terms of the dosage and one dosage may vary wildly compared to the other. And I highly recommend not doing this stuff at home. It's it's just too, too much of a variable. It, you got to get it dialed in. My favorite company 
for medical marijuana products is Zoots. And and I say medical, I also mean recreational. For me, all of this it is medical when I look at it because I'm trying to take care of a certain condition for somebody. I'm not trying to get people high. And so even products that are labeled as recreational, I'm still going to call them medical. So just for your own knowledge at this point, um, I herbs are herbs are medicine and and this is medicine to me and it's just a matter of of dosing it properly for folks. So my favorite company is called Zoots, Z O O T S. They're up in Seattle. They're the company that allowed me to come in and and learn all about their process, which blew me away because I'll be honest, we got we got to go back to that stigma I had. I'm like, "Okay, I'm going to walk into this place and there's going to be a bunch of dudes in dreadlocks and it's going to be like a Rasta party." And, and it was definitely not. I walked in and you have legit individuals who, I mean, it's an office. It's, and in the back where I go through the labs, I am seeing folks in lab coats with real lab equipment. It's not something out of the movie Breaking Bad, you know, granted they had good stuff in there, but it's not like, you know, in a trailer behind, uh, behind an office. We're looking at a legit lab with folks who are scientists. They are chemists, which is cool. And so, I, I was impressed. It, it made it very scientific for me versus thinking I was going to walk into a company where there's going to be a bunch of folks with dreadlocks. I mean, and that's me. And, and I'm completely embarrassed that that's my stigma in my brain. And that's my Illinois backwoods chick thought process. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just me. So I went in there. I got a ton of information. And, and the owners at Zoots are amazing in terms of being able to explain things on a scientific level because they've gone into the research. And that's their big thing. They really want people to use marijuana responsibly and and know their dosages and know what works for them and so I got a huge education there in in the time that I was there and I was just I loved it it was great so that being said I like this company for that because I've called other companies and they're not as friendly and not as welcoming so these guys let me in and and just really taught me a ton zootology.com is their website Now, Z-O-O-T-S, their products are at most of the medical marijuana dispensaries here in Washington State, in Colorado as well, and I'm seeing on their website some things about Massachusetts, so that's very cool as well. So this company in particular, the big thing that they do is they test in-house to know that every single one of their products is exactly the same, but you know, in terms of the dosages and and what you're going to get. And they start with five milligrams of THC compared to the CBD in their products. And so because the biggest thing here is the THC amount, right? Because we, if we're using marijuana for a medical use, I really look at it in terms of responsible use of these products because yes, THC will get you high in in enough amounts. And if you are not wanting to get the high, you want to know your dosage of what works for you of the THC. So five milligrams is the minimal dosage. You can go up to 10, you can go to 15, you can go to 20, 25, etc. And and this is what I typically will start with with my patients. So I've already mentioned that before and, and the big reason I want to start with that is is this takes the, oh, I'm going to go get stoned idea out of out of the head. However, I'm going to go back to my stigma again and me being a very naive um, gal from the middle of nowhere in Illinois going, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this stuff out because if anyone is one of my patients out there listening, my biggest thing that I always say is I never try anything on my patients until I have done it myself. Granted, pharmaceuticals, I'm not going to try things that are, are not suited for my body if I don't have that condition. But in this case, I actually have been struggling with insomnia for quite some time. I vary from four hours of sleep a night to six on a good night, and some nights no sleep. And so I had been dabbling in my head with this thought of, okay, I've heard some really great results from a combination of THD, CBD for sleep. And I said, you know what? All right, now's the time I'm going to try it. I seriously treated the trial as if it was a rocket launch. And I mean this because when I was in college, I smoked marijuana once. And I I was at Colorado State. Mom, dad, everyone's going to hear it now. My mom-in-law who listens to this. It's true. I did try marijuana once. 
And the one time that I really truly did try it, I got lost in the woods just outside of Fort Collins, Colorado at a lake called Carter Lake. It's not that far from Fort Collins if you know the area. And I thought I was I was like in another country. It, it was bad. And so yes, probably something was laced into that. We bought it from a friend of a friend. And, and this is where things go wrong with buying marijuana and edibles from people you don't really know. Go to the dispensaries if you're going to do this. So public service number one for today. Now, in all of that time I <laughs> where I was lost at evening with a couple friends, I was like, okay, I'll never do this again. And I truly didn't. And I might have pulled Bill Clinton's and faked and, and did not inhale, which is true because peer pressure, there's a lot of people that try to get you to smoke weed with them and, and you're trying to be cool. And, and I'll admit, I... <laughs> I never really smoked pot but that one time and that's what happened to me. So my thought was, oh my goodness, I'm never ever going to <laughs> I I'm never going to be able to to live this down. So my story being said, I I basically was like I never want to do that again and I'm not doing drugs. I don't do drugs. So I never wanted to try marijuana. But I knew I had to do this for my patients. And then in sacrifice of myself for my patients, I grabbed some of the Zoots Kickback product. It is a lemon drop um, oil. It's a relaxation blend. It has some L-theanine, which is a neurotransmitter for calming the nervous system. And the regular dosage is half a teaspoon. And I decided, okay, I'm going to do a half of a teaspoon um, full on, just going to do it. Let's see what happens. And I basically was like, have my husband there and make sure that if anything goes weird or I try to wander out of the house and get lost in my own house, he's there to help me. Well, <laughs> nothing happened. I slept like a baby and got the most sleep that I've ever had. Probably in my whole life, I slept about eight and a half hours the first night. And then I was like, this is so awesome. I got to do this again. So I tried it the next night and slept about seven and a half. And I've been using it every night since at the five milligram of THC dosage. And I'm fine. I don't need to go up. I, I don't need any more. I'm not hungover in the morning. The only thing is, is that I do have a little bit of the cotton mouth, the dry mouth in the morning, but you drink some water and you're good to go. If that's the most of my experience, pfft, fine, bring it on. That's awesome. So that's where I was at with the the THC. And I I love it. I think it is great. It's better than Ambien. It's better than not sleeping. It's better than all of the other products that I've tried, like the 5-HTP or the melatonin. Because with 5-HTP, I get a little anxious with melatonin. I get so groggy in the morning, even with some of the minimal dosages. And I know a lot of my patients have these issues too. And so I really, really was surprised. I'll be honest. But in my head, I'm also like, oh my God, I'm doing drugs. I'm doing drugs. I do drugs every night to help me sleep. It's weird. Why do I think this way? Well, it, it's, it goes back to that stigma. And this is where a lot of my patients are at too. And a lot of people out there are at. A lot of doctors are out there. I have some really great doc friends of mine who we've had multiple conversations about this. And I started talking about using my CBD and THC blend. And now, you know, we're, we're looking at each other like, oh my God, am I doing drugs? I don't know. Am I? Um, it's, it's so stupid, but that's the stigma out there. And a lot of docs have that stigma out there too, because depending on how they grew up, depending on what they did as they were growing up, they might have one thought or the other. But the important thing here to think about is that marijuana is an herb. It's like any other herb that's out there. It can be dangerous. You just have to dose it right and know what your limits are and how your body effect, you know, gets an effect from it. And so when I kind of came to terms with going, okay, I'm using this. It's seeming to work for me. I, I'm looking at it like, okay, I, it's useful. And the benefits outweigh the risk. And this is what I'm looking at when I look back to opioid use and things of that nature in a lot of my patients. The benefits outweigh the risk. So we've talked about the benefits outweighing the risk and me still not telling my dad who doesn't listen to this podcast because he, he doesn't really know what a podcast is and he's confused as to what I do. <laughs> but dad, there you have it. If you ever listen to this or basically my cousins are going to out me. So there you have it. I use medical marijuana to help me sleep. And I feel a heck of a lot better being able to sleep 
every single night. I have more energy. I can think straight and, and life is good. So I highly recommend medical marijuana for folks and I am going to continue to do it. And it's changed my mind. And I think at this point, yes, I still am grappling with some of these things in the back of my head as to I'm doing drugs, but really it's not. It is an herb just like anything else. And I think that's funny that I'm going, ooh, it's an herb. Because, yeah, then there's the whole movies that we've heard of or people that are like, but you want to smoke the herb. So ah, you can't get away from it. But ultimately, the, the answer is in the proof that it helps. And I'm here to also say that medical marijuana is helpful and it is a great alternative to a lot of the big pharma medications out there that have a heck of a lot more side effects. So segueing into side effects. Now, why do I not want my patients smoking or vaping? Because of the lungs. It is very hard on the lungs. I do not recommend putting anything into your lungs that you do not need to put into your lungs. The other thing is, is that it's harder to adjust the THC response and how much THC is getting in when you're smoking. With the edibles and the oils, it's dialed in. As long as you use a company who is testing to guarantee there's five milligrams of THC or whatever it may be in a certain product or 10 milligrams, depending on if you're eating a cookie or a brownie or you're, you're taking an oil. Whereas with smoking or vaping, you have no freaking clue what you're ingesting. So that is one big issue. The other big thing without being able to control it is you might have anxiety, you might get paranoid. And that's a lot of what we think about in terms of the stigmatism of, uh, or the stigmatism, that's an eye condition, the stigma that goes along with smoking marijuana. And you know, the confusion that happens and the lethargy and basically getting lost to the lake, not too far from where you live. I mean, things like that, weird things happen. And and I don't want people to ever have to experience that. That's why it's much better to use the edibles and oils that have been scientifically tested to have the dosages dialed in. So there you have it there. That is why I do not recommend smoking or vaping. And, and just don't put things in your lungs that don't need to be there. The other big thing is that in Chinese medicine, there's a lot of, of things that we're starting to find with chronic use of marijuana in terms of heat conditions in the body, meaning the body warms up. Now, in some cases for folks, that could be a good thing. And in other cases, it's not because heat to the Chinese medicine principles is the anxiety. It's also drying. So much like that, that cotton mouth in the morning, that's heat, that's dryness. Um, and so folks who don't drink a lot of water, marijuana can dehydrate you and also can adjust your electrolyte levels a little bit. And so it's huge to keep in mind that if you're going to be using medical marijuana, you need to make sure that you're getting at least 80 ounces, 64 to 80 ounces of water a day and throwing some electrolytes in there. So a little bit of lemon or lime water, a couple of little grains of salt, a little bit of honey or maple syrup. That is your homemade Gatorade right there. And that is huge because we we tend to not think about the the side effects of of these particular items um, when we're doing it and how it counters in your and how you can counter them in your body. But with medical marijuana and the principles in the Chinese medicine world, a lot of times too, I'm also making sure that folks are watching any changes that happened along the way. So say you start using a medical marijuana oil to help you to sleep like me, and you notice that you have cotton mouth in the morning. Note that. Or you notice that you have some digestive changes. Maybe your bowels are more frequent. Maybe they're diarrhea. Maybe they're loose. Maybe, you know, maybe you become more constipated. Pay attention to these things because the side effects are things that should be evaluated and you don't want to be, be suffering with. It's, it's the same with any type of medication. Um, but, if you, but if you do notice these things, pay attention because we, we don't know the long-term effects of medical marijuana use. We don't. Um, we do know that if you're, if you're using products with a long a long-term use of high THC, we do know it affects memory. We know it affects cognition. We know that it affects weight. We know it affects uh, 
and when I go to cognition, I mean, it, we know that we have a lot of different effects there. If you look at, for example, someone who started smoking marijuana when they were 13 or 14 years of age and their brain is not fully developed, a lot of times it's going to slow them down. And, and that's unfortunate because that's purely tied to the amount of use and the amount of THC going through the body. And so are we going to have a society of dumber individuals? No, I don't think so. If we can use the medical marijuana properly, responsibly. And so that's one of the biggies, but we don't know some of the other long-term effects as of right now. And so that's why I can't help but stress, don't smoke marijuana, don't do the vaping, go to the dialed in dosages because you can control at least that aspect of what's going in your body. And don't get your edibles or oils from friends. Go to a retailer that has the dosages dialed in for you already. It makes it a lot easier to know what effect you're going to get and you'll get the same effect each time. Now you might have to increase some of your dosage with time. At this point I have not had to increase my dosage to help me to sleep and it's been over a month. Now for other people it it might be different and that's something to to take into account and where to speak with your doc on this who is knowledgeable in medical marijuana. So the other big thing here is is really dialing in kind of what your what your goals are in terms of your condition and seeing if perhaps you can take yourself off of it. Because in some cases with my patients, I have had patients who have autoimmune conditions and we've got their, let's say Hashimoto's, because that's probably the, the number one condition, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I've, I've taken it so that we've used the CBD oils to help to reduce inflammation. And once we get that inflammation down, we can taper their dosage down. We can get them completely off of the medical marijuana too. And, and that's another thing to keep in mind that sometimes this could be a temporary thing. It does not have to be a permanent thing and something to help us to kind of just reset the system because the endocannabinoid system is much like our endorphin system. And, and these are there for protective mechanisms to not over inflame, to not overstimulate and, and protect our fight or flight response, protect our adrenal glands. And so one of the important things that I want a lot of people to think about here is that once you start using medical marijuana, you can come off of it. You do need probably a doctor to help you with it, but maybe, maybe you try tapering and do, you know, a, a slow taper off of these different products. And I, and I think in the future, I will do a podcast on it, on the tapering down and, and coming off of these items. Once I know exactly, um, the, the, amount and how to and, and give you a little bit more sense of it because right now I'm really only in the beginning stages of recommending medical marijuana for my patients and I don't have enough data. I've got a few patient samples right now, but that's not enough for me to feel confident and be like, yes, this is a protocol. Everyone should try this. No, I'm not there yet. So give me some time and over time I will come up with some protocols of getting started and coming down off of the medical marijuana um medications and and just kind of go from there till then dosage is key i treat medical marijuana just like any other medication you ramp up slowly start at a low dose and go up know the companies that you are using zoots z-o-o-t-s zootology.com check out their stuff Mo they're at most of the medical marijuana dispensaries in colorado and washington they're great products and they do their research they know they, they test in-house and they test through the Washington Regulation Board as well. And so this is huge. The great, great company. So I highly encourage you to check their products out. The best thing about them is that they also have products where they encourage you to, to experiment. They have a the Zoot Rocks. These are little hard candies. These They come in a, in a multi-pack where you can actually use the different dosages to see how you respond. So they've got 5, 10, 20 milligram, I believe is how it is. I might not be 100% on that, so don't quote me. But they do have the varied dosage um, packs, and that's important. Because if you're trying to experiment, sometimes that makes it easier along those lines to know what's going to help you. 
So I highly, highly recommend that. Now, in terms of official medical marijuana use, there are products that are even higher CBD concentrations, and that is where you need a medical card. And the Zytology company has some products out there. There's other companies as well. But I can get people to do pretty well on some of the recreational, well, labeled recreational products. However, I don't like the use, the, the, ner- the term recreational. I think it's all medicine. And so that's where I differ because I call it all medical marijuana. Um, but for all intents purposes, if you're finding that you're not getting the pain relieving effects, you're finding you're not getting the anti-inflammatory effects from the lower dosages of CBD, and that's anything under 500 milligrams, then you might want a medical card and you want to experiment with it to see how those higher dosages work for you. And if you're going to do that, go look for a doc who is very well versed in medical marijuana in your area and go from there. So to sum this whole podcast up, I basically wanted to use this to to really educate out there that marijuana is a plant. It's an herb like any other herb out there. It's, It's like cilantro, it's like chamomile, it's like mint. And it does have medicinal effects and the stigma around it is is changing and that definitely changed my mind and I'm definitely thinking on the level of, you know what? Perhaps this can be useful because we have a heroin crisis, we have an opioid crisis, especially in the state of Washington. There are so many overdoses every single day. I've seen multiple people overdose in my lifetime, friends of mine, people I went to high school with, and it's it's sad. It's it's really, really sad. And if there's an alternative and it seems that the medical marijuana is an alternative, I highly, highly recommend it. The the benefits far outweigh the risks and the stigma. And at this point, I don't really care if anyone knows that I have been using some CBD and THC to help me to sleep. And so I've outed myself and there you have it. And now you know my opinion on medical marijuana and my family does as well. And you know what? That's great. Pass on the word. I really think it's important for folks to understand how this medicine works why it works, and the benefits it may have. Because if we can keep folks off of the high-dose narcotics for pain, or we can get folks sleeping, guess what? Sleep is so huge for your overall life and body function and metabolism and pretty much keeping you alive. It's huge. Hey, if we can get people to sleep without all of the heavy hitter medications with ridiculous side effects, I'm all for it. And, And that's really honestly where we need to be for a lot of different things, just more responsible about how we are using herbs and our medications. So go out there, check out some of your recreational dispensary locations, see what they have. Go to my resources page or go look up zootology.com. Great company, great folks, and they're legit. It's This is science. This is not a bunch of stoners held up in a lab playing around. This is legit stuff. So get rid of your stigmas about marijuana. Not all these folks are like the movie Half-Baked or any of the other things that you can imagine. It is legit medicine. So that's my opinion. That was a long rant on medical marijuana, but nevertheless, hopefully I have helped you to understand a little bit more about this medicine and possibly it's something that you'll go try out and see how you do. But definitely, if you're not sure about it, find a doc in your area and and make an appointment and sit down and chat. We love to educate and I do as well. And if you need anything, have any comments, questions, I'm here to help. Go check out my website at drjkrausnd.com. Shoot me a message or email me as well right through my website, and I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Once again, you've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Kraus. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes. Have a fabulous day, whatever you are doing. Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So, I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. 
If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.